The Supreme Court finally hears the petitions against the controversial anti-terror law Tuesday, February 2. The first day of the oral arguments ends with a stirring interpolation by Associate Justice Marvick Leonin, questioning the timeliness of the 37 petitions challenging the law. Leonin says it may be too early for the Supreme Court to intervene given that petitioners have not suffered a direct injury yet. He mentions the two ITAs that were jailed and charged for terrorism after allegedly shooting a soldier in an exchange of gunfire in Zambales in August last year. The ITAs file a petition for intervention on Tuesday to be able to join the petitions. Leonin grills lawyer John Molo, a constitutional law professor from the University of the Philippines, on the role of the judiciary in giving the political department a chance to address the harm. Molo responds, My humble submission is that deference, judicial restraint, ends where the Bill of Rights begins. All 37 petitions allege, citing jurisprudence, the anti-terror law's threats to freedom of speech make it viable to a facial challenge. The petitions list a barrage of theoretical situations where any person expressing dissent can be prosecuted under the anti-terror law under its vague definition. Leonin argues that while he understands the theoretical fear of petitioners, they cannot insert their political perspective into this law. Leonin says, for a facial challenge to be valid, petitioners must show that the implementers of the law have no other choice but to violate freedom of speech. Molo disagrees, saying there are also facial challenges that have more recently been recognized. The Supreme Court cuts the oral arguments at 5.30 p.m. sharp. The next session will be 2 p.m. next Tuesday, February 9.